Oh man, well that was like the longest two weeks of all time, but hey, the float wheel has finally launched their uh, their launch video, their 2022 launch video. So I say we check it out, see what's going on with it, talk about it a little bit. Like first off, what the heck is it? What's going on? Is this actually like a true competitor for Future Motion for One Wheel? Is it a scam? Like what what the heck's going on here? So I figured we watch the video, we'll check it out, we'll talk about it a little bit, uh, maybe do a little bit of deep diving research on what's going on, and we'll get after it. It's an interesting video. I've watched it like twice already, but I figured we'd check it out one more time and sort of really dig deep into it. So here we go. Let's check out the Float Wheel Event 2022 video that just dropped. All right, grab a beer. Let's get started. I'd like to welcome all of you guys today to join us on the Flow Wheel event 2022. As you may know, we have been secretly designing our flagship product. I don't know if it's super secret because we knew about this like back in, I want to say June off the top of my head. You guys might have to fact check me on that one. But um, the whole two weeks joke is in reference to back in early in the year, they dropped both of these models, sort of teasers of them. It was like up on a pedestal. And they're like, oh, two weeks, we're gonna have our launch. It's gonna be crazy. And everyone waited and now it's December 5th. Well, it's December 6th now, don't tell anyone. But December 5th, they waited to drop. So that's like the longest two weeks of all time. So I don't know about how secret they've been about this, but. Actually, it has been about two years since we last launched the Flow Wheel Kit. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, this isn't like a brand new company that just appeared out of nowhere. They've been sort of making DIY one wheelish like VESC based stuff for a while, for about two years now. They did um, their V1 Float Wheel Kit, and then they actually came out with a V2 after that. Kit allows you to build your rear on balance skateboard at home. But this time, balance we skateboard. are bringing you the That's most powerful, them? the most advanced adventure machine. That's I'm adventure machine. I like that. That's cool. To introduce the Flow Wheel ADV. All right. So right out the gate, they got two models. It looks like the ADV Pro and the ADV. Um, I don't think there's much of a difference in them besides just the rail design. I'm pretty sure all the internal components are exactly the same. We'll get into that in a little bit. They do have two different battery options, but I think right out the gate, they're both exactly the same. It's just two different rail designs. First thing that jumps out right out the gate, you've got ADV Pro is obviously th those are tech rails, right? I mean, come on, those are Matthew Shoemaker tech rails for sure. It's got the truss design. It's got the adjustable axle height right there. So, I mean, come on, those are, those are straight up. On Facebook, you can see Shoemaker actually kind of semi called him out on it. And I guess they told him they give him a free wheel or something like that, but who knows if that's gonna happen, but it is what it is. Looks like they went with that. And then over here on the ADV, <laughs> Those are WTFs straight up. It's like, we got the center, we got the drop down, we got the kick back up. I think they went with uh, three degrees on those, which is just a touch less than what WTFs actually are. So eh, it is what it is. It looks like we got tech rails, rails on the ADV Pro and we got WTFs on the ADV. But other than that, they look like they're exact same as far as the specs go. Could be wrong, but let's keep going. ADV and ADV Pro. All right, we got some hardcore action, some burnouts. Hold up, yep, he's got an enduro on there for sure. So this must be like an early prototype version because it looks like all of their photos on this video so far and on their website as well, have all just been like CG renders. So this must have been an early prototype right here. It's definitely on an enduro, right? Like that's 100% enduro tire. Okay, a little beach ride. Probably, probably gonna say it's waterproof, I guess. Yeah, you know, a bunch of people uh, on Facebook were commenting about how he looked super sketchy off road. I don't think he looked that sketchy to be perfectly honest with you. I, I think he was riding just fine. So I don't know. Okay, Cannon Core Motor, six horsepower. This is like the first big claim they've made in the video so far. So for reference, the GT motor, uh, Future Motion advertises that as three horsepower. So they're claiming that this one is two X the horsepower on that one. And it looks like the axle is a monster on this thing. It's significantly bigger than every single one wheel axle we've ever seen, which all tend to be about the same size so definitely different bearings in this thing so one wheel bearings won't be fitting this for sure um oh man i don't know how they're going to get away with such a heavy duty motor pumping 
I think they're going 84 volts on this too. So they're claiming that cooling won't be an issue on this, but it'll be interesting to see how that goes in the long run. Dual concave foot pads. I don't know if this shot that they're showing us right now is like the actual 3D render of sort of the grid pattern of what they're doing and the exact shape of the foot pads because it looks really similar to the Future Motion GT foot pads where it's like really, really flat in the middle and then like a hard kick on the outside. Um, I know some people like them, some people don't. I don't really love a hard kick at the outside. I kind of like a more progressive uh, concave, but uh, hey man, to each their own. I'm just curious if they went with the Future Motion style on these foot pads with just those little lips on the outside or if they, if they shaped it a little different. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so that's that's their promo, pretty pretty banging promo video, I gotta say. I would've liked to see some more intense riding on that thing for sure. All we saw was kinda flat ground, off-road. Didn't look like they had any on-road riding at all, and no drops, no sends, no bonks, or bollies for Bodie. No slides, none of that. So um, yeah, it would've been cool to see like some heavy-duty riders on those really pushing it, but is what it is, cool little promo video. Let's uh, let's listen to this guy now. So he's gonna he's gonna talk us through all the specs. The ADV series is our latest flagship, designed for the most challenging riding conditions. Yeah, I don't know about that. I didn't see a lot of challenging riding conditions there in the promo, but yeah, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt on this one, man. Whether it's a gnarly trail or you're just doing tricks all day long. Now let's move on to the features. As an engineer, I have always wondered that. Why all the boards in the market right now have chosen to put all the battery cells in the rear end of the board. The space in the rear is kind of limited, causing the board to hit its performance ceilings really quick. We are putting 34 cells in the back and 6 cells in the front. So that's pretty interesting. I've been thinking about, you know, why, why haven't One Wheels done that in the few, in, uh, you know, like in the recent versions. It's definitely easier to just put all the cells in the back and the controller in the front. So it's interesting with them split. That's a lot of cells in that battery, man. This thing is gonna weigh a ton. But if weight isn't an issue for you, then this could be really cool. I do like splitting them up and balancing it out a little bit. That's cool. Um, and you'll see a little bit later here in the video how they accomplish that because you definitely have to make the controller footprint smaller in order to stuff batteries in there. So this is, this is interesting. This is one of those things that on this I think is actually pretty pretty cool and revolutionary that they're doing would be this split battery pack but we'll see how that ends up operating in the long run like is that going to run as smooth as one single battery pack having two of them that are linked together like that how's that going to be for repairability i don't know it's it's definitely an interesting question but it's a it's a bold move the benefits of such configuration is very obvious we get to pull more cells in without having to make the board any larger than the XR. So that's cool that they're claiming that the board's gonna be the same size as the XR. I actually like the XR platform itself, like the footprint and everything better than the GT. I, it's just more comfortable for me. So that's cool that they're designing it sort of based off the XR and not off the GT as far as footprint goes at least. We have also stacked the cells closer to each other comparing to the vertical stack. It is about 13% slimmer than the GT, so the center of gravity is lower to the ground. If hey, you ever watch news. Jake Leary's video, you will know that- Hey, Jake Leary got a shout out on this one. Shout out to the professor, huh? That the right height of the board will massively affect the riding experience. If you are too high above the ground, you may notice the board feels unstable and top heavy. Hold up, you're really gonna be like, if it's too high off the ground and then we're back here on this and you got you got lifters on this thing, man. What are you talking about? Ah, whatever. Even half inch of a drop is going to make a very big difference. Agreed. With the launch of One Wheel GT a few months ago, we are seeing that a lot of trail riders are having issues with the motor gets overheated. I think the problem is that that seems to be like the big guys are having issues with motor overheats. I don't think a lot of the smaller guys, I personally haven't had any issues with it, but I know a lot of folks have. That's why they got products out there to help with that. With the GT, they are putting more voltage and current into that motor, which is also the same motor you get on the Pine and the XR. Yeah, so they're putting uh, quite a few volts into it, but with the claims of the float wheel on the battery pack, they're doing an 84 volt, which is actually more 
than the GT pushing into their motor. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, how this thing handles heat dissipation and cooling in the motor. And the heat dissipation becomes a huge problem. Also, that motor is struggling to keep up with riders anyways. That is why we have developed the Canon Core motor from the ground up, featuring a 53% larger stator compared to the GT. Way bigger stator on that thing. That thing's significantly larger. It is larger in diameter, longer in length, creating a magnetic flux that is stronger than ever before. We have also designed a cannon-shaped axle to better quit off. Yeah, that thing's a monster, man. 75 millimeter axle versus a 35 millimeter axle. I think the uh, EUCs, I'm not super well versed in EUCs, but I think the EUCs use axles that are pretty darn similar to those ones. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that performs. I can tell you right now, just by looking at this thing, like if you guys have ever picked up a GT and felt how heavy it is, there's no way this thing is gonna be lighter than a GT. This thing's gonna be significantly heavier than a GT. The two things on one wheels and like GT specifically that make them so heavy are the motor and the battery pack. And it looks like this thing has a significantly larger motor and significantly larger bat. Well, I don't know if I'd say significantly larger battery pack, but definitely a larger battery pack for sure. So uh, yeah, keep this thing's gonna be heavy. As you can see here, it has a much larger contacting area with the rail. So the heat gets put out of the motor to the rail and dissipates into the atmosphere. The cooling does not stop there. We have also filled the air gap in the motor with Ferrotech STG fluid. Okay, so they're putting ferro fluid in there. Uh, there's definitely some people in the community with their GT who've been using ferro fluid in it. There's this stuff called Staterade that some folks have used. Um, also, Corey Boheen over at Armadillo's makes a product called Armachillos, which I think is essentially the same thing. So that that's nothing new, but it's interesting that they're doing that straight out of the factory. I don't know the long-term effects of that, of having that in the motor, and like if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm I'm thinking that like if it was an, a good thing to have in the motor long term, that Future Motion would have used it right out the gate. But I, I don't know. I have no idea. So I guess I guess we'll find out. This enables us to use the rotor as a big heatsink achieving five times more cooling capacity. Five times more cooling capacity than the one wheel GT. That's a big claim right there. And look at this, peak power output is nine horsepower. So nine horsepower, Future Motion advertises theirs as a three horsepower motor and nine horsepower would be three times a GT motor. In, I mean, it's not the same footprint. Uh, it's definitely a larger footprint, but it's, definitely the same like six inch tire that goes on it too. So three X motor on this thing seems wild. Um, oh man, I'm curious if they're going to be able to back that claim up. Cause that's a crazy claim right there. Like if that's true, that is such a heavy duty motor right there. This thing's going to freaking fly. Without having to worry about the heat issues. And the sweet thing is that all of that performance is packed inside of this six inch hub motor. Yeah, so it looks like it supports, uh, it says six foot, but maybe that's just a China thing, uh, six inch go-kart tire. So it'll fit all of the XR compatible tires is what it sounds like, which is great news. So it means everyone can run whatever tire you want on it that's not like a GT based tire. So really the go-kart tires are typically five inch and six inch hubs. Um, Future Motion used a six inch hub for all of their models until the GT, and then the GT is now a six and a half inch. So they went with a proprietary tire for that, which means that everyone's sort of limited on options. Really, as of now, the only options you have are like the Future Motion tires or Float Life Enduro tires for GT. So this is cool because this means it opens up a lot more tires for the community. So that's, that's great. Having a six inch hub motor really opens the door for different tires and not like the GT that has a proprietary size hub motor, which you only get three tire options. We have totally redesigned the controller based on the open source VESC project. Okay, so it's definitely a VESC based controller. That's kind of what we all expected right there. It also features a compact double decker design to minimize the footprint of the controller. And that enables us to put more cells in the front. That is a really interesting design choice right there. And this is kind of like, one of the things I'm more excited to dig into on this controller, like this is, 
it's pretty wild to me that they stacked them double decker like this. I'm super curious how it's gonna operate after you bang this thing around a whole heck of a lot. But by double stacking them, we've now they've now taken the footprint and they've reduced it by what looks to be like 30% at least. So they were able to jam those extra cells in the front. But it'll be interesting with those standoffs right there. And once you start throwing this board around, cause there's no way this board weighs any less than 40 pounds, right? It's gotta be at least five pounds heavier than a GT. So, you know, once that thing goes flipping down the road, you know, hopefully this thing can hold up. It's crazy design though. This is, it's pretty interesting to see this. I, I kind of like this design. If it's actually gonna end up working out, this is pretty rad. We use the supercharged technology MOSFET to create a power stage that delivers over 200 amps of power at 84 volts. Yeah, so it also has an OSB buzzer built in, of course, with options to turn it off. It also connects to your phone. Okay, over speed buzzer. I'm guessing that's similar to the GT over torque beep, the nudge indicator, as I call it. You know, the beeps if you're pushing a little too close to the top end or if you nudge over something. Apple Watch so compatible, that's, that's kind of right cool. Wrist. But Tony, I hear you ask, what about the lights? I'm happy you asked because we are packing a fully integrated light control module. The smart light bar shows the battery. Okay, percentage so we're getting lights on it. I hope status. that means headlights too, because it looks like they're really showing this this light bar quite a bit. Uh, I I don't know, man. I'm not a fan of the light bar, like on the Pint or the GT or the Pint X. Like I think it's just too bright and it gets in the way. I'd put a tint on it or just like cover it up with tape or something. But yeah, I know a lot of people like it. So uh, it seems like they definitely took a page out of Future Motion's notebook on that feature. 1016 lumens and they switch color automatically as you change your writing directions. The light is almost too bright that they need their own dedicated heatsink to cool it off. Oh man, I, that's cool if the front headlights are bright, but I hope that battery indicator headlight isn't super bright because at night, when you go to mount your board and you look down at that thing, if it hits you right in the eyeballs, you're like, oh cool, I'm blind for a hot second now. All the ADV rails are machined out of billet aluminum or aluminum if you're a British. They gotta be 60-61. If they were 70-75, they would have advertised that for sure. But, you know, depending on how beefy they build them, it's probably fine. The future motion rails are 60-61. Um, typically, a lot of the aftermarket rails, like, you know, WTF homebrews, and um, which would be similar to the ADVs or like the tech rails. Um, I'm pretty sure Matthew Shoemaker uses 70-75 as well. So that'll be interesting, um, especially with that heavy of a board too to make sure that those rails really hold up to aggressive riding, but I'm sure you can cut those suckers thick and make 60-61 work. So I, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Yeah, I think I think Matthew does three degrees as well at tech rails. We do a little more than that for WTFs. It looks like they are doing variable height adjustment on both of the models, not just the ADV Pro. So that means Okay, yeah, but it looks like they're different. So the ADV Pro, it looks like you do the height adjustment through the rails, but the ADV Standard, it looks like you do the height adjustment through the axle blocks. So, huh. They all have that 3 degree tilt for better ergonomics. Dual concave foot pad. Designing a foot pad with dual concave takes balls. <laughs> it takes balls. Oh boy, that's kind of understatement of the century. So we'll, yeah, we'll see sort of what tech they're gonna be using for the sensors in these concave foot pads. So if they're, you know, using the same tech as Future Motion, it's it's sort of like a gamble. Like, do we make it really sensitive in order to have good activation on this thing where people like Jeff aren't gonna be complaining that it won't activate correctly. But then if you do that, you have much more potential for ghosting and it getting stuck. Or do we make it really kind of tough to activate and basically eliminate ghosting, but it'll be a little frustrating and you have a lot of false starts. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of line they thread on that one. Because, you know, this this company float wheel they have a lot less liability potential essentially than future motion because they're based outside the us there's like not really good contact for them they're taking payments in crypto so it's like you know future motions right here they're a lot more accountable to everyone they've got the feds breathing down their neck this uh they can be a little bit riskier over in china i think which is what you see with a lot of the euc manufacturers just like chasing top speed and bigger batteries and bigger motors and everything so this seems like they're definitely taking a page out of like the euc manufacturing handbook right here and just going like bigger better better so it, it's interesting to see we took the middle ground here 
and make the footpad less aggressive to the GT's footpad and redesign the foot sensor on it to make it not ghost. Okay, that's an interesting statement that they redesigned it to make it not ghost. So that would mean that they would have to identify what was causing it to ghost, which they just made it too sensitive. I mean, that's exactly what it was because that was their fix is they just went with thicker layer of plastic on top of the new post recall foot pads and that solved the ghosting issue for the most part. So it would mean that they would have to make it a lot less sensitive. Now, what I'm curious about that they don't tell you in this video is are we getting a two zone sensor like Future Motion does or are we doing like a one zone sensor like posied where it's just like on or off, which is usually what we do to all our boards when we mod them. So I'm gonna be really curious to see what they have with that. Cause I don't know if right out the gate, the light bar indicator is gonna be like future motions where it's gonna tell you if you're on one or both sides of the foot pad, or maybe it's just gonna be a posi. I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out when it comes out. What I find really interesting on this one is that, you know, future motions got their top speed on the GT of 20. Everyone knows it can go faster than 20. There's guys out there that have cracked 30. There's like a 30 club of crazy people who like taking that thing way too fast. But it looks like they're only advertising 22 on theirs, which doesn't make sense to me because with those specs, that thing is gonna go way faster than 22 miles an hour. I mean, you tweak the field weakening on that VES-based software and you be flying on that thing. Like just those specs alone, I mean, people should be able to hit 35 on this thing. It looks real fast. So it's interesting they put 22 miles an hour on there. Maybe that's like safe top speed that they're considering. So it looks like the headlight is significantly stronger on this one. It looks like it's like 50% stronger on this one. The GT headlight is already crazy bright. So it looks like we're way brighter than that. Oh, now they're claiming six horsepower. So that must be like nominal as opposed to maximum output of it. But even six horsepower is double of what Future Motion claims for their hypercore motor. So like it's either double the motor or triple the motor. Either way, it's a whole hell of a lot more motor claimed. Right to repair, not supported from Future Motion. 100% supported from float wheel. That's a weird spec to put in there, but that's a little bit of pandering to the community. What are you gonna do? Everyone wants to hear it, so I get it. Fast as F with that fast charger, 840 watt charger. So I'm curious what that's gonna, ugh, I hope they have a good BMS in this thing. Cause that's something that it doesn't seem like they mention, at least unless I didn't catch it. It doesn't seem like they've really talked about the BMS much in this one. And that's sort of the thing that's been missing from the VESC builds uh, is, is lack of like a good proprietary, not even proprietary, like good open source BMS, right? So I'm curious how they solve that issue. It's gotta be a proprietary one that they built. There's really no good like off the shelf BMS that would be able to handle this board. So I'm curious to see what they built for this thing. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it supports, you know, charge balancing. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of questions here for sure, but the claims that they're making are wild. And if this thing actually can pull through for what they're saying, it's gonna be a crazy board. Notice they didn't put weight in there. That'll be an interesting one with the weight. Cause he also mentioned in the beginning of the video that like, oh, riders that do tricks are gonna love this board. It's made for trick riding, but uh, dude, you can't be doing a bunch of tricks on a 40 pound board. That's insane. But hey, you know, maybe it'll be one of those things where we can mod it. There'll be smaller battery packs we can put in, maybe smaller motors, we can lighten it up. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe this is just like their plan to do like a base model board and then with crazy different upgrades and swappability in the future. Who knows? And we are not charging $500 for a BMS repair like other companies do. Oh, that's a the shot price right of over the, the ADV future starts motion at right there. $15.99. And the ADV Pro starts at $17.99. Free shipping included. And we are taking pre-orders for $500 of deposit. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you very soon. Okay, so there it is. That's the whole entire rundown with the new float wheel uh, ADV series and ADV Pro. If they can actually pull through on all those specs that they're calling out, I mean, it's gonna be a crazy board for sure. Like that's gonna be one of the, like a really, really cool base model VESC build for sure. Will they be able to pull it out? I, I don't know. There's a lot of claims and it looks like, it seemed like they had a working prototype, but I don't know how much of it was actually 
done with the specs that they're calling out right now. I don't know if it was the same battery pack or controller module, or uh, we, we know for a fact it wasn't the tire that they're dropping with it. Curious to see what the final weight of this thing's gonna come in as. I'm curious to see if they're gonna actually be able to make it happen and ship by February, because they're claiming February. Let's go to their website and check out exactly what's going on here. So yeah, you can see right here on their prototype image, they, they've got a Vega on it, which is kind of hilarious. Um, but this is not the tire that it's gonna ship with. They're actually shipping with a tire that looks very similar to an Enduro, but it's not an Enduro, I can tell you that. Um, so it, it's interesting. I'm curious how much is actually built into this prototype right here for what they're claiming. Cause it looks like the headlight, not the headlight, the um, battery indicator bar right here might actually be not the one that they're using with their production level one. Cause this one just looks like a solid bar and maybe it's just the photography of it. But the one that they were advertising in the promo video was a bunch of little dots. Oh, and it looks like the operating temperature here, that, that was something that we kind of forgot to cover. It looks like if you go with the ADV Pro, they use different cells in the battery. I think that's really the only difference. Like if you go with the Pro battery, as uh, you can operate at these lower temperatures. And I'm pretty sure this is based on the battery chemistry and not based on anything else with the board that they're advertising this low temperature operation. So those East Coast and Midwest homies that ride in the snow, like shout out Brooks, uh, you'll probably be pretty pumped on being able to ride it when it's cold. I'm in California, it doesn't get cold here. So that's not really like a big thing for me. So here's something that I saw that was a little bit interesting. Um, you can see right here, these little uh, half fender guys look pretty familiar. If we go to the parts right here and check out all their parts, drop top fender. Come on, man, you even had to call it the drop top. Look at this thing. It's a straight exact copy. Ah, that's whack but what are you gonna do? So we got all the parts here for sale. This is kind of cool that you're able to just straight up buy a ton of parts for this thing. So if you do break stuff, hopefully they'll be able to ship you parts. Um, but it looks like you've got carbon fiber rail guards, which are, look, they also look like exactly the same as Matthew made. Um, you've got the rail guards here, which these, you know, it, oh, it does say, injection molded with polycarb. So that's the exact same as the future motion rail guards. It looks like, it looks like you can buy the battery. Okay, here's the BMS. Preloaded with BMS firmware and soldered wire and connector. I don't really know a whole lot about BMS, but a $60 BMS looks pretty darn nice to me. Hopefully it's heavy duty enough to be able to handle everything. Hopefully it's safe. Like that's one of my main concerns here is they're packing a lot of punch into those battery packs. And oh, the BMS is basically what keeps things safe, keeps all the cells balanced, make sure that you don't get thermal runaway. Like there's a reason to have a good BMS in boards. Like that's the one thing with the current VESC builds that kind of freaks me out a little bit is a lot of people, myself included, are running them BMS-less. So if you're not really keeping an eye on your battery cell levels, it can get dangerous pretty darn quick. So that's really cool to see that. It looks like the motor controller, 250 bucks. That's a little pricey, but it is what it is. I guess once you throw the light control module on there, that's a separate piece. So it could be one of those where if you blow your controller, it's just the motor controller you have to replace and not the whole thing. So that's nice. I'm seeing a lot of chatter online of people being like, oh, that's a scam because of this. When you click on it, and let's say we go to this board right here. Let's say we want to go with the ADV Pro, right? Boom. And let's say I want to order this thing and it looks like 650 bucks. So the 650 bucks, this is just a deposit. That's not the price of the board. The board is actually going to be 1799, it looks like. And then we've got the deposit right here of 650. It looks like it's, it's refundable, right? Claiming shipping on February, 2023. And Founders Edition will be rewarded with a free 840 watt supercharger worth $200. We go to checkout and you're like, okay, cool. Everything looks all good. Let's see. We're just gonna click on Julian's information. Don't worry, Julian. I'm sure you're gonna blur this part out so you don't get doxxed. Didn't mean to dox you, buddy. Okay, so we got free shipping on this thing. And then here we go. We go to payment and check this out. Here's, here's something that's a bit of a red flag, but I'll sort of explain the reasoning for this in a sec. 
The only way to make payment on this new float wheel, if you wanna put a down payment on it in order to put a deposit and reserve yours, the only way is to pay in cryptocurrency. So you can't put it on a credit card, you can't pay with your bank account, you can't finance it. It's straight up Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, or I don't even know what this other one is right there. Probably Tether or something like that. I don't know, whatever Coinbase accepts, right? So the only way to buy this thing is with crypto. So that makes things a little bit complicated because let's say uh, Float Wheel decides to not actually fulfill your order or it's taken longer than expected or there's no communication and you're like, uh, this, I just want my money back. Uh, gonna be a little tough to do because you don't have just a credit card process. You can't hit up Visa and say, hey, give me my money back, right? So it's keep that in mind if you're gonna go this direction, there's that. But I guess the bigger question is, oh, why do they have crypto? Is this a scam? So I can say I'm pretty sure this is not a scam. And here's the reason why, like Float Wheel has actually been doing kits and, and kind of selling stuff for two years now. And they do have history with being able to fulfill people's orders. So there's definitely people out there that have like old float wheel kits. They had their V1 kit and then they had their V2 kit. And I think they've done some other stuff too, but they've definitely fulfilled some stuff. Now, I believe it's when they did their V2 kit was when Future Motion sort of got wind of what they were doing because it's, it's obvious patent violation here, right? Like, I mean, there's no two ways about it. You could say what you will about like, oh, well, competition is good for the industry. And I 100% agree with you on that. But at the end of the day, this is like super blatant patent violation, right? Future Motion wants to serve them court documents to be like, hey, you can't do this. We wanna give you a cease and desist. Had a little bit of trouble figuring out exactly who was behind it. So they couldn't like physically deliver them in person, which is typically what you have to do, like certified mail or like, a process server to be like, ah, I got you, here you go. Uh, because they're Chinese based, there's not really a name behind it, at least there wasn't, right? There wasn't an address, there was just an email address is all there was. So Future Motion's like, hey, court, can we please uh, serve this guy electronically because we don't really have info on who it is. And the court was like, no, you can't because you haven't done your due diligence to really figure out who it is, even though it seems like they kind of did in my opinion, but regardless, they didn't know who it was, so they had a lot of trouble serving them. I believe, now I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty darn sure that they were at least able to get like all the payment processors in the US to not deal with float wheel, which is why you see only cryptocurrency going on right now, because that's a lot harder to track and a lot harder to shut down. So um, I don't know if in the future, they're gonna get bold enough to try to work with credit cards again, or financing or anything like that. But it seems like for now, it is just simply cryptocurrency. And it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens next, because I'm pretty sure Future Motion had trouble doing any legal action against them for obvious patent infringement when they didn't know who it was. But now if you watch their new video, uh, I mean, he, he basically comes out and says, hey, here's who I am, right? Gives a name and everything. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but I think there's gonna be, uh, I think there's gonna be some stuff happening. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's definitely some drama in the one wheel community. It's nice to have something to talk about besides the whole CPSC. There's like a lot of good stuff here and like a lot of bad stuff here. So like, I mean, I've been saying since the beginning, like competition is definitely good for consumers, right? Like you're gonna drive innovation, you're gonna drive prices down for consumers. It's not necessarily good for a company that holds a monopoly in an entire industry, for sure, because having a monopoly is awesome if you're that company, but it could be good for the consumers. Now is competition where the competitors basically, I don't wanna say like doing sneaky stuff, but kind of going through, and taking obvious IP that belong to other people and integrating them into a board and selling it sort of like, not necessarily on the gray market, but kind of on the gray market, like cryptocurrency only and like a little bit sketchy and taking pre-orders when they don't have an actual like finalized prototype that they're walking through. Like, is that the best way to do it? I, I mean, personally, I'd probably say no, but it's the way that they've, decided to go about this for obvious reasons because you can't just bring a whole entire board straight to market without future motion coming after you because they hold all the patents on it right we'll see if they can deliver by february that'll be an interesting one as well because 
they're not known for necessarily meeting deadlines, much like Future Motion and much like Float Life. <laughs> everyone in the in everyone in this space is, you know been through some challenging times in the last few years with shortages and COVID and, you know, coming out with new products that have never really been made before. So you run into different manufacturing challenges that you didn't know you were going to have. So yeah, everyone misses deadlines. We'll see if this thing actually makes it out here in what, three months. Future Motion does assemble the boards in America. We know a lot of their parts do come from China, but a lot of their parts don't come from China and they do have pretty darn stringent quality control. I know there's always issues with stuff with, you know, boards falling apart or, you know, cables coming unplugged or, you know, you're never going to catch everything. But I, I do think that they do a pretty good job, all things considered, with quality control. I, I'm guessing that the quality control coming out of China might not be as good. I mean, I think that's a fair assumption to make. I don't think I'm saying anything too crazy there. Hopefully the quality control is good on it. Positive part of that is hopefully if the if the quality control isn't like super up to par and there is a part that breaks or maybe it arrives broken or something like that, hopefully you'll be able to get an easily replaceable part that you can just replace yourself as opposed to shipping the whole entire board back. I'm a little bit curious how the support for that stuff is going to be because I know some people in the past have had trouble getting parts from float wheel for their kits. And I don't know if that's a function of the float wheel as a company itself, or if it's, you know, they were getting so much heat from future motion, they had to go underground for a while. I don't know. So there's just a lot of unanswered questions with it, but it's definitely interesting to see this thing um come to market for pre-orders at least and we'll see if we get something by february so i don't know let me know what you guys think uh down below in the comments are you guys excited for this do you think it's kind of bogus are you waiting are you waiting with bated breath are you stoked that this thing on paper is like blowing the gt out of water do you think it's actually going to be able to fulfill on all these claims and promises let me know down in the comments and uh i'll, I'll see you guys down there so anyway thanks for joining me Appreciate you guys and float on my friends.